right. We're, uh, we're in Luke 15, and we finally got to verse 11. Oh, wait a minute. That's actually the first verse that starts. In there. <laughs> Luke 15, we'll look at 11 through 14. <clears throat> and our subject title tonight is the father gave the prodigal what he asked. <clears throat> All right, verse 11, start with verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, and that's, we'll stop right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, the younger son is asking for his inheritance. You remember that the elder son would get a double portion, so he would get two-thirds of the father's living, and the younger son would get one-third. <clears throat> and so um, the younger son asks for his portion, and the father hasn't died. There's no death. He couldn't wait on death to produce what was supposed to come. He had to have it now. And, of course, when you have it now, then a lot of times it's for your flesh. <clears throat> and um, so he says, Father, give me that inheritance. But if you'll notice, and I was going to save this for later, but if you'll notice, it says, and he divided unto them. His living. That means that the father wasn't dead, but he basically lost all. Okay? Instead of it being a giving, you know, I'm going to be at the Lord, take your portion. <clears throat> they literally took it all. And, um, <clears throat> and then, of course, it says not many days after he gathered all together, all that was his, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living, and when he had spent all. So here's the, here's the problem. Many times we think <clears throat> that um, God gives us our carnal requests, and when he gives us our requests, because we don't necessarily think they're carnal at the time, when he gives us those requests, we think we're spiritual because he gave us what we asked, you know. So, so we, you know, there's a, I mean, obviously that, that would obviously be the case in a certain sense because the prodigal doesn't really understand what he's even, what he's initiated that has caused all this stuff, you know. He's, he's totally unaware at this stage anyway. And so, um, so there is this reality that God many times gives us our requests. Now, I, I went on a search that I know that most of you all have done at some time or another. <clears throat> but it's all, you know, it's through the Old Testament in a bunch of different places. And it's just one story, and it's the story of Israel and the quail. And I know that you're familiar with it, but let's turn to Numbers 11, verse, starting with verse 18. <clears throat> and this is early on after they have come out of Egypt. <clears throat> um, they have left Egypt, but Egypt has not left them. They still have it in them. And we'll see. We'll see this. First, starting with verse 11, Numbers 11, I'm sorry, Numbers 11, verse 18, starting there. Numbers 11, verse 18. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for you have, you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? <clears throat> that ought to scare us right off. 
<laughs> you know, Moses, do you have to be so blunt? You know, or God, you know. <laughs> Uh, for it was well with us in Egypt. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like I, it seemed like I remember that they were having a rough time there, you know. <laughs> and uh, and yet it's funny, uh, you know. I've I've probably mentioned this somewhere in my lifetime to you, but uh, having not only been a pastor but counseling people, um, I have seen over and over people that. Um, uh, get married and then it gets bad and then after a certain period of time they get a divorce and then then they're away from one another and then they run into one another at the mall and they just seem everything seems rosy and they get back together and after just a few months or shorter you know one of them goes now I remember why we got a divorce you know so um, <clears throat> it was well with us you know well, you know, you just don't remember the story correctly because you haven't been in it for a while. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh and you shall eat. You shall not eat one day. And this is the Lord talking now, basically, through Moses. Uh, you shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it comes out your nostrils. And it shall be loathsome unto you. Okay, Lord, you know, you're giving us the request, but your spirit's not right. And I would say he, he's more right than we are to ask for flesh, <laughs> to have the gall to ask for flesh. And you'll see that the Lord will bring this up in other places. And he's, he'll say, I gave you angels' food from heaven. <laughs> angels' food, you know? Nobody else ever got this before. And yet, you know, it doesn't satisfy you. All right, so... <clears throat> um, until it come out your nostrils, and it be loathsome on you, unto you, because that you have despised the Lord, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. In other words, this is incredible the amount of people that are out here in this desert. And how are you going to do that? Because nothing grows out here. We are lucky. We were, Robert and I we were talking about this just before we came through the back doors. We are lucky to find a rabbit <laughs> for, for one person out here. Or, or, you know, Gopher Delmer, you know, something like that. <clears throat> anyway, um, um, verse 22, shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. All right, so um, you kind of got a weird situation because you got the people already complaining. You got Moses who has seen the Red Sea and seen the deliverance of the Lord, and even Moses' song was called the song of deliverance, or the, the, the song of redemption or deliverance, whatever. And, and he's kind of going, how, how in the world is this going to happen? You know, how is this possible? Well, you know, how, how is it possible to get across the Red Sea? You know. If some of you remember, what I think I was in Bible school, Deb may remember, and, and somebody was telling me we were talking about the Red Sea and drowned in the armies of Pharaoh, and, and they said, uh, well, you know, they crossed at the Red Sea where it was like three inches high, the water. That's how Israel got across the Red Sea. It was a place where it's three inches high. And I said, oh, my God, that's even a greater miracle than I thought. And they went, what? And I said, 
You drown the whole army of Pharaoh in three inches of water? This is a miracle. <laughs> All right, let's start at verse 31 now, Numbers 11, 31. Gosh, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to get through reading the scriptures before we're done here, girl. Uh, Numbers 11, verse 31 <clears throat> through 33. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails, which we call it quail. We don't add an S, but anyway. <clears throat> but the, let me say this. The Bible is correct. <laughs> brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp. I mean, literally by the camp. As it were, a day's journey on this side, and as it were, a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were, two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Somebody's going to be sick. <laughs> That's a lot of flesh to eat. You want flesh? I got flesh for you. <laughs> if that's what you want. Verse 33, And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. All right. This only gives us part of a story uh, there's a couple other places that mention this, and um, one of them is uh, Psalm 78, of all places. Psalms tells this story from a little bit different angle. <clears throat> so Psalm 78, verse 18. And they tempted God in their heart. Okay. Now, now we got, now we got the issue, folks. I know you've never heard me say this before, but it's a heart issue. <laughs> it's always a heart issue. It is never just what is done. It's always, always, and forever, it's a heart issue. Okay. So, you know, um, the it's with. Them, I mean, it started with obviously not really understanding. I mean, how do, we, how do we get there? They understood the blood on the doorpost, and it meant they can get out of Egypt, right? They didn't understand the lamb that they were told to eat. That was where they missed it, okay? <clears throat> so they get to the Red Sea, and they're going, oh, my God, what's going to happen here? And, and uh, the Lord opens the Red Sea, and they get on the other side, and then they get into the desert and the wilderness, and one thing after another, one thing after another. <clears throat> and um, there, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what always motivates everyone's heart, but I know that the Lord mentions murmuring throughout the Old and New Testament because it is a clear sign of heart trouble. Heart trouble. Yeah, you have a heart murmur. Hey, you're not supposed to jump that fast. You know, in, in comedy, pauses are very important. <laughs> And so the Lord, the Lord looks at these things, and he doesn't see these things. He sees that there's a, there's a heart problem, and that heart problem is toward him. Now, I'm sure this is true of most, if not all of you, but for me, when I start seeing stuff going off in me, it's not the Lord. I know it's a heart issue. I know it is. I know it is. And I know that the problem's right here, you know. Um, and you, you say, well, n you know, they got a problem too. Okay, you got a heart problem too. <laughs> but, but anyway, yes, they may have a problem too. But if we're not willing to start here, if judgment doesn't begin at the house of God, and we're supposed to be the house of the living God, then what is it about? Just correction? Correcting, you know, issues? You, you can correct issues all day long and never change someone's heart. You know? 
I know that for a fact because Deb does it to me. I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm telling y'all that, not her, because she knows I'm teasing. Um, so, you know, he just says it straight out. I mean, that verse, asking for meat for their lust and tempting God and, and you know, moving it on that front. <clears throat> so, um, again, Psalm 78, verse 18, they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. <clears throat> Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out, meaning he gave them waters, and the streams overflowed. Can he give us bread also? Can he, can he provide flesh for his people? I will say this. He probably doesn't want to provide flesh for his people. We already got plenty. We got plenty. All right? <clears throat> Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth because it wasn't, it wasn't, Lord, we're hungry and we're poor and we're destitute and we look to you as our source and we find our strength and our life and we draw from you. It was, hey, if you can do this miracle, why don't you do this one? And if you're not doing this one, what's wrong with you? You know? So, so a fire was kindled against Jacob. <laughs> See, there. this is normally known as Israel. Israel. You know who that is. Jacob and Israel are the same person, right? But Jacob was the guy who was always manipulating or trying to get things his way. You know, get things his way. So God didn't call him Israel called him Jacob because of that spirit, which Jacob wrestled with God, and, you know, after that, he limped. He was weak. He was, you remember that? I mean, it was the best thing that ever happened to him. He wrestled with God, you know, and Again, having done a lot of counseling before, I've seen people wrestle with God, and I, I usually don't freak out. I think people that wrestle with God have a better chance of finding the Lord than someone who just goes on and has blinders and, you know, can't see anything of what's, you know, what's wrong. But a lot of times wrestling with God requires uh, an Esau. Well, if I can get a few people to acknowledge what that means. I won't explain it now because I have two minutes. And she's, and she's gotten to the place where she doesn't just hold it up. She goes. <laughs> With a smile, yeah. Smiley face on it going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Okay. Well, this is his method of salvation and his way. And his way, folks, I mean, every one of us know this on some level in our being, to get us where the Lord needs to get us a lot of times he has to take stuff away. And I think, I th this is going to sound weird to you. Some people say, I, I know God by the way he gives. And I tend to know his real nature by what he takes away from me. And that he does do that. And, you know, it's never fun. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, but I know that that removal many times gets my attention and it gets me where I need to be. Anyway, so we got one minute left. Where, where did I just finish? Okay, so when we come back, we're only halfway through this. When we come back, we will do part two of the same name and we will start at verse 23, okay? All right, let's take a break. <clears throat> 